the political negotiations. We've got Jerry Adams meeting Gregory Campbell. This is a sign of, of optimism going to Gregory Campbell asking for an Irish language act. But what about what's happening on the wider front? Both Sinn Féin and the DUP have been a little bit reticent about coming on to television programmes to talk about the negotiations. Does that suggest they're getting somewhere? Well, first of all, I don't really think that uh, Gregory Campbell meeting Jerry Adams is much of a sign of optimism. I suspect that if you were a fly on the wall in that meeting, um, it wouldn't be uh, particularly uh, productive, no matter which language you were speaking at the time. Um, in terms of the generality, well, we hear these noises that talks are underway at Stormont Castle and they're making progress. But so far, on the outside, we've got very little evidence to show that they are getting anywhere. I mean, the kind of noises that I've been hearing have been about whether they might, for instance, at some point uh, nominate David Ford, say, as a designate uh, justice minister. I think that will meet some of the DUP's concerns because one of their concerns is that they believe that their grassroots have still not got into their heads the notion that it is not going to be Jerry Kelly of Sinn Féin, the justice minister, uh, that instead uh, the choice will be determined by a cross-community vote. So if they went that step further and they actually said, look, it's... David Ford or Naomi Long and we've agreed this, then that will be progress. But certainly as of this morning, uh, Alliance themselves hadn't heard anything like this. So if they've you know, got this to any degree of uh, agreement between the two parties, they haven't broached it with the person who they want to give the job to. And how would uh, other parties react? For instance, the STLP, who've said before that under de Haunt, any new ministry actually should go to them. Are they likely uh, to acquiesce? Uh, well, they will complain. Uh, they clearly uh, have said that they believe that they're due another ministry. Um, this, of course, would imply that this would be the 11th pick and in actual fact, if the Justice Ministry was given out through the de Haunt system, which is essentially just a proportional system uh, whereby you send these departments out, it's hard to imagine that the other parties would regard it as 11th on the list of their priorities. It's much more likely to be uh, first or second priority up there with finance. Um, having said that, this all comes down to agreement between the two major parties who've got the votes uh, to force this through. Uh, it's been pretty clear that what they're drawn towards at this stage anyway, unless their agreement to the summer falls apart, is some sort of cross-community voting system. I mean, it's not just the cross-community vote they've got to sort out. Also will be the, the, the powers and uh, the, the responsibilities of this new uh, justice minister. Uh, should the justice ministry be inside the executive? I think they're probably moving uh, towards that notion. Uh, but then should the, the justice minister, if you like, be in a silo so that he, if he or she makes a decision, uh, you can't have those decisions called in by, say, three nationalists or three unionists, as would be the case at the moment. So those are presumably the kind of things they're addressing in their talks, but uh, we still don't know whether they're getting anywhere. Well, indeed. And um, what about uh, our own uh, kind of ministerial easy rider, the hell's angel uh, of politics up here at Stormont, Sammy Wilson? Uh, I think uh, we, we, we can actually see him in action here. Yeah. Look at this. Well, he's well known as a climate change sceptic. I sort of well, thought when I heard this at the weekend that maybe he was an MOT sceptic, <laughs> uh, thinking that uh, as long as the, the, the motorbike was working on a day-to-day -day basis, you didn't have to pay attention to warning signs about what might happen in well, the I'm future. Well, I'm not sure if he is such a climate change sceptic. Surely there he's just simply re reducing his carbon footprint by trying to sort of be economically... Although somebody uh, told me this is one of five bikes <laughs> that, that he's got, so uh, maybe he's just sort of spreading it out so amongst he, a number of petrol tanks. What's he done? wrong again remind us well he uh, was snapped by one of these uh, uh, cameras uh, that checks uh, whether you, you you've got tax and uh, MOT and it, he came up as having uh, not have the MOT now his line of defense is that this bike had been garaged um, uh, he was taking it uh, to have work done on it in order to um, have the MOT uh, carried out about three days later and that he thought he was covered uh, and he's saying this is an anomaly that will have to be addressed. Um, the, you know, some of the public would say, yeah, fair enough. There does seem to be a bit of an anomaly there, but others have been less than understanding. And the saying, official position is he should have had the bike on a trailer. Uh, yeah, but I imagine there's probably a lot of um, motorcyclists and vehicle owners who would think that you could do that kind of thing. So maybe we'll see a great Sammy Wilson reform bill coming through uh, the Assembly at some yeah, stage uh, some to, legislation to rectify this pressing anomaly. OK, Mark, stay with us.